Now let us read in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7, verses 11 to 16. The Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. All the Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord and in his own house he successfully accomplished. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house that my name may be forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. Let us all pray. Lord, open our hearts and our minds today and enable us to understand your word and let it change our lives and our nation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, allow me uh, to share to you the status of our nation or the Philippines in terms of uh, disaster risk. Now, alam niyo po ba that we are ranked third when it comes to uh, the countries with uh, higher or highest risk according to the world risk in uh, 2018. And not only that, we are located within the ring of fire between the Eurasian and Pacific uh, tectonic plates. Which, na kung saan the earthquakes and the volcanoes are posing serious risk when it comes to the safety of uh, the people. Adding to that is the flooding, also the droughts and uh, tsunamis. Those uh, further contribute to the exposure of uh, the natural hazards. Hindi lang po yun, ang ating pong bansa is archipelagic na kung saan madaling pumasok yung iba't ibang mga tao from different countries dahil mga islands uh, po tayo. Kaya po, hindi, uh, hindi nakakapagtaka na madaling pumasok maging yung mga virus na galing sa iba't ibang mga bansa. Now, the question is why uh, I'm saying that to you right now. Because I want you to understand that though we are so-called Christian nation, tandaan po natin, we are not exempted when it comes to the disasters or calamities. This a law that was passed by the Senate. They call this the Republic Act Number no. uh, 11469 or the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act. Now, the Senate was able to passed this law in a record-breaking of 18 hours. Could you imagine that they were at risk to go out and will be infected and yet they made this decision to be united so that they will be able to be a blessing to our nation. Nagkaisa po sila. Now, ang tanong po ay ganito, kung kayang magkaisa ng mga leader ng bansa natin, question is, kaya din po bang magkaisa ng mga mana ng palataya ng Diyos? Now, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7, verses 11 to 12, it says, The Solomon finished the house of the Lord in the king's house. All that Solomon had planned to do the house of the Lord, and in his own house he successfully accomplished. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer, and I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Now, that was Solomon when he was inside the temple and, and was able to finish building the temple of God. He went inside to pray and dedicate the temple. And then all of a sudden, the Bible says that God appeared and answered his prayers. Now, I want you to understand this. The Second Chronicles chapter 7 is not only central message to the book of Second Chronicles, but also one of the most important chapters in the book of in the Old Testament. Why? Because it offers hope, the Bible says. It offers hope to our situations. It offers hope to our nation. It offers hope to our society. So whether we are facing this problem, I want you to understand this, that there is hope in God. Amen. We can come to Him and we can pray to Him. And the Bible says, rest assured that He will listen and He will answer our prayers. Whether we are facing this 
kind of problem sa, sa bansa natin ngayon or whether we are in the midst of difficult situation personally sa buhay natin, sa pamilya natin or maybe sa trabaho mo, you don't know kung may, may, mayroon ka pang babalik ang trabaho I want you to understand this, that God is our hope just like Solomon, we can always come to Him we can always pray and we can always be assured that He'll listen and He will answer our prayers I want you to take a look of that word if. If is always, tandaan po natin, expresses conditionality. Because if is always followed by then. I have a son, you know, he loves to explore many things without knowing the repercussion. In other words, every time po na kami ay pupunta sa isang lugar, kapag meron pong mga stairs, siya po yung unang umaakyat. Pag, pag siya rin din po yung unang bumababa. So kapag may nakita po siya isang lugar na pwede niyang akyatin, inaakyat po niya. And syempre, bilang, uh, bilang uh, ama, nandun po tayo to always protect our children. And every time he will do that, I will always come to him and always talk to him and remind him. I want you to come to me first if you want to do that because I want to explain to you what will happen after you do that thing. What are you going to get? Now, because I want my son to grow in wisdom, to understand the repercussion of many things that he will do. Now, could, could it be that as we come to God, it is the same thing that we will also have wisdom and not only that, we will be able to see the things that we are going to get out of our obedience. Now, I want you to know this, that God wants us to come to Him. Gusto ng ating Diyos na tayo ay lumapit sa Kanya bilang mga individual at bilang isang bansa. Doon po sa binasa natin, God encouraged us to come to Him just like Solomon. That we come to Him by humility. Let us come to God or let us humble ourselves to God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12, Before his downfall, a man's heart is proud, but humility comes before honor. You know, the word humble means become subordinate or living under the hand of God. Doon po sa binasa natin. Now, living under the hand of God is like living under the authority of your parents. Lumaki po tayo. Alam ko, karamihan sa atin lumaki sa pangangalaga ng ating mga magulang. At yung mga magulang po natin, madalas sinasabi po sa atin, hanggat dito ka nakatira, kami ang mag bibigay sa iyo ng mga bagay na kailangan mo but at the same time kami rin ang masusunod sa buhay mo until such time na kung saan tayo po ay uh, lumaki na at nagkaroon na ng kakayahan na mabuhay para sa sarili natin then we can go out dun po sa mga pamilya natin but imagine na habang nandun po tayo sa pangangalaga ng pamilya natin o ng magulang natin not only we are under their authority but also we are being what? being blessed by them pinag-aaral tayo, pinapakain tayo, dinadamitan tayo, pag may sakit tayo, sila nagdadala sa ospital, sila nagbabayad ng mga gastusin natin sa pang-araw-araw. Now, that is living under the authority of our parents. Now, think about living under the authority of God or being subordinate, becoming subordinate or living humbly under the hand of God. It means God's grace will be upon us. It means God's protection, God's power, God's favor, God's healing, God's wisdom, God's mercy. You know, another way to come to God is through prayer. God called us to come to Him. God called us to pray. Let us pray to God. Why? Because praying is part of our identity as God's people, as God's children. Tumatawag po tayo sa ating ama na nasa langit dahil tayo po ay kanyang mga anak. And when we pray, we are invoking to know His will in our lives, to know His plans sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin, to understand why we are going through this situation. And alam niyo po ang realidad ng buhay paminsan is this, mas marami pong tanong kaysa sagot mula sa ating Panginoon. And I remember personally sa buhay ko po, naranasan po namin mag-asawa na magtanong din sa ating Panginoon at hindi po kami nagkaroon ng sagot mula sa Kanya. When my first child died and he only lived for 40 days in one of the uh, hospitals here in Metro Manila, when he was in the ICU, 
for 40 days or neonatal intensive care unit. And then on the 40th day, he died. We were asking God and ask God, Lord, bakit na naman dumating sa buhay namin to? Lord, bakit, bakit kami pa ang nakaranas ng ganito? We were asking and seeking an answer, an answer to the questions. But that time, it was questions. And we were not able to find an answer to our questions. You know, the most important thing was this. It doesn't matter if God will answer our questions. But the most important thing is we were able to come to God. We were able to come to Him and pray to God. Why? Because when we pray, as we pray to God, it allows us to experience peace. It allows us to know that He is in control sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin. And I believe with those questions during that time, I believe one day God will give us His answers. You know, I remember one of the quotes of uh, my favorite author by the name of uh, Anonymous when uh, he said this, When we pray, God hears more than we say, answers more than we ask, gives more than we imagine in His own time, in His own way. Another thing is, let us seek God's face. You know, when we say seeking or seek, seeking is having this kind of uh, ad adrenaline. Seeking is having this kind of passion to seek God. And we will not stop unless we experience the God that we serve. That God na pinaniniwalaan natin exist. You know, before we don't know what kind of God we are seeking. What kind of God are we searching sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin. But you know, 2,000 years ago, He came to us and introduced Himself to us just like us, a human being. Naging katulad niya po tayo. Nakanasan kung ano yung nakakanasan natin. Naghirap, katulad ng mga paghihirap sa buhay natin ngayon. Nasaktan din tulad ng mga nasaktan o nakasakit o na, nakaranas ng sakit sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin. Why? Because of the works and the words of Jesus, we will be able to know that God really exists. And because God exists, we can confide to Him. In other words, we can come to Him anytime. Pwede siyang magsimpatay sa atin. Nakikinig siya sa bawat isa sa atin. Kasama natin siya sa buhay natin. And also, let us turn from our wicked ways and turn to God. In other words, let us repent. You know, we are all in danger if we are not on the right path. I remember driving in Makati in one of the streets in that city. Meron po kong kasama, one of our leaders. And then he said to me that, Pastor, I think nasa one-way road tayo or street tayo. And as I ignored him, all of a sudden in the middle of the street, I was able to see that police officer almost in front of me. When I look at that police officer looking at me, what I did was, I turned 180 degrees. Alam niyo pa, minsan, when we turn from wicked ways, minsan alam na natin, and somebody is already telling us that we are doing uh, things that are not pleasing before God, and yet God is still faithful. He is the one convicting us. He is the one leading us and telling us that, no, you are already doing things that are not pleasing before me. Aren't you glad that God is our good God? Now, what is the result of coming to God and calling to our God? God will forgive our sin and will heal our land. Tandaan po natin, sin always hurt people. And hurt people hurt people. And hurt people will always hurt our nation. Could you imagine this if all of us will come to God together as His people? Call to God. God will bless our nation and will bless our society. People will have relationship with Jesus. Our nation will be governed by God's will. The people in every society, in every sector of society, will be filled with love and compassion. And our government will not be filled with corrupt people or corruption, but will be filled with conviction, knowing what is right and what is wrong and will be led by righteousness and justice. Magkaisa po tayo upang mailayo po natin ang ating mga buhay at ang ating bayan sa banta ng masama. We can do something. May magagawa po tayo. We can pray for our city. 
We can pray for our nation. We can pray for the nations of the world. Right now, I want you to pray with me as we pray for our city, our nation, and the nations. Lord, we thank you because you are the God of this city, you are the God of this nation, and you are the God of the nations of the world. Nilalapit po namin sa inyo ang bawat mananampalataya, lahat ng mga tao na tinawag mo at nananampalataya sa iyo, Panginoon. Gamitin niyo po sila upang maging pagpapala sa buhay ng kanilang komunidad, ng mga tao na dinala niyo sa kanilang mga buhay. Gamitin niyo po kami, Panginoon, to bless our city. Lord God, to speak word, Lord God, of encouragement, Lord God, to speak life and not death, Lord God. Lord, maraming salamat sapagkat naniniwala kami na sa tulong mo at sa paggamit mo sa bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon, kami ay magiging bahagi ng solusyon o Diyos upang maisakatuparan ang plano mo sa buhay ng bawat isa at sa plano mo, Panginoon, sa bawat mga bansa. Marami pong salamat. We bring back all the glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, Amen.